The nightlife industry and nightlife culture around the world is slowly dying. Here are 10 reasons why, but also, David, will it ever come back? Dude, we used to hit the club to try to find some love, but now it's a dub. The trend is going down, and I don't ever know if it's coming back, bro. We got to check out this Bloomberg article, Andrew. It is titled, The Long Slow Death of urban nightlife and this is going viral right now it is talking about the economics behind clubs and bars globally shrinking right now and nobody sees this trend reversing make sure you like subscribe turn on your notifications check out smile last sauce at smilelastsauce.com andrew real quick there's a bunch of reddit posts about it of course there's a bunch of data about it do you agree disagree and how do you feel about it Yes, I mean, I think that I can see the decline in nightlife, man, for sure. And we have a bunch of reasons, a lot of reasons that are obvious, but also some reasons that are not as obvious. So if you've ever wondered this question, then let us know. And I'm sorry for my friends who work in nightlife or own nightlife bars, but I think it's changing. I don't think it's fully going away, but it is definitely getting hit right now, especially for the past 10 years. It's shrinking. Yes. Uh, I will say this. I bemoan it in the sense that I miss that energy. I love everybody being out, but I totally understand the reasons why that we're about to list. It's completely logical. Oh, man. When the times were good, the times were good. But... The times are no good anymore. And here's the number one reason that most people were listing on a variety of forums on the internet. Going out in nightlife globally is too expensive. It's just expensive, man. Especially in the big cities, cocktails at a cool bar are anywhere from 17 to $25 before tax or tip. And then not to mention, if you want to go to the nightclub, right? And you want to roll with some buddies. First of all, there's an entrance fee, let alone there's a bottle fee. You got to tip people. And then you're being overcharged for a bottle of liquor that you could buy at the store for about $60. And then at the club, you got to pay about about 500 to $1,000 for it. Right, you're saying the alcohol markup at a club theoretically is 10 to 15 X what that bottle costs if you buy it at a retail store. And then let me finish the picture for you. You and your buddies, you guys save up, you guys all throw down on this table for a couple of bottles. Yeah, it looks cool. The ladies come out with the flares and the light things and whatever. And then at the end of the night, you don't even really have the fun that you expect. You know what I mean? And that is so common. It happens all the time. It, it happens nine out of 10 times. Actually. It's just expensive to go out and to act like you have a good time. Now, I can see why a lot of people still go to dive bars and like sports bars, sports bars, cocktail bars, sports bars. Even if you watch the whole game there, that's like three hours. You got to spend a lot of money, intake a whole bunch of calories and whatever. We're going to get to that. But yes, essentially it costs quite a bit of money to go out. But here's the key, Andrew. I don't want to blame the bar owners. I think that they're saddled with a lot of costs due to inflation, so they are forced to mark the drinks up. We're going to get into that. David, the next point that is killing the nightlife industry is that COVID taught you how to stay at home, David. Uh, I mean, every, look, listen, everybody learned how to work from home. Well, everybody's learning how to stay at home at home on the weekends because listen there's better streaming better netflix there's better food deliveries everybody bought a better tv a lot of people bought a dog at home a lot of people built home theaters a lot of people are gaming a lot of people are spending their weekends at home doing something else right apple vision pro their house is nicer their house is more expensive their rent is more expensive there's more amenities in their building i'll say this there also may be a generation of zoomers gen z that doesn't even know what it's like to go out because they completely miss that phase when the bars were closed for two or three years point number three david this is a big one dating apps kind of removed a lot of people's reason to go out and meet people because so much of meeting a significant other or even someone that you're trying to have fun with or just another mate the dating apps do so much of the work and it does not require going to a public place like a nightclub spending money and hoping that you're going to meet somebody right. and dealing just with meet the them on uh, that. rejection of that person possibly not being attracted to you right at least on the apps they're probably at least sufficiently attracted to your photos yes i'll say this too they this even is for friends andrew they got bumble friends you could meet f platonic friends through the app yeah and i know a lot of people did meet really good friends through the club a lot of people also met some shysty friends from the nightclub but either way i did meet some friends from the nightclub in my past years so i definitely obviously have some fond memories of the nightlife that we went to but of course i acknowledge that all these things are true and especially for girls i think if you're 
to be honest, moderately attractive at the minimum. You could go on like six dates a week that are yep. paid for oftentimes by the guy. All right, reason number four, the cost of running a bar or nightclub have just gone up. I mean, look at this chart right here. This chart is crazy, breaking down the expenses in a hyper micro sense. Wait, these are the these are the risk expenses of a nightclub? Yes, yes, oh no, this gosh. is just a bar. You got utilities, repairs, security, triple net, interests, employees, employee insurance. Oh, David, David, this is just a bar, not even a nightclub, guys. No, this no, is, no, 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 no. This is like even your average dive bar has this many costs. Right. However much you think a bar, a small little bar has to spend, think of a nightclub, bro. You got security. Okay, you need staffing, the front of house, back of house, meaning the people who meet people and then the people who are in the back. You need to hire cool looking men and women to serve these drinks, right? Right, right. and they gotta be good looking. You just can't get your cousin to do it. No, I mean, that. well, the bars that, you know, the clubs who make the most marquee. Because really people. what you're doing in nightlife, especially at the club, is selling a fantasy. A mm -hmm. fantasy land of like a life being like a movie for a moment because real life oftentimes is not yeah. like a movie. Yeah, and then David, guess what? Maybe something beyond your control. If some type of violence or like, God forbid, a shooting happens outside of your nightclub, it could shut down your nightclub forever. Right, you could lose everything. Yes, so it, something beyond your control can happen to ruin your entire business. I know that there was gigantic Asian party night promotion groups in LA and New York City, and there still are some, but I want to say that the volume has shrunk by like 70% right. over the past 10 years. And, and of course, when you want to talk about staffing right now, a lot of people in general don't want to work. Well, they're trading on Robin Hood. Yeah. Let's be honest. Or, That's what they're doing, or, or FanDuel, or whatever they're doing. Whatever it is. Let's be honest. Point number five, people are primarily saving up their funds for larger festivals or bigger trips, potentially trips overseas to travel. Yeah, I mean, listen, whether it's people saving up for EDC in Vegas or people saving up for Coachella in, in California, Hard Summer, all these big festivals. I mean, there's festivals in the East Coast as well. I mean, people are saving up for trips to Latin America, South America, to Asia. Passport to, bros? To, yeah, passport bros, but also to Tokyo and, you know, Europe. Dude, trips. how many people do you know on Instagram that have been to Tokyo in the past year? Yeah. The yen is weak right now, so the, in a way that's good for American travelers. So you should yeah, go to Tokyo. all the things that Lawson's. Point number six, a lot of men, young men in particular, are giving up on dating. Yeah, and giving up on dating means that it's going to drive them less to go to the bar and nightclubs. Well, you know also what I the mean? bar and nightclub in the past, it was like the only way you could date. Yeah, it was the only way you could meet like a, a girl or was this social lubricant with the drinks and everything. And it was kind of this atmosphere that people, let's be right. honest, David, to a certain extent, everybody bought into it. When you walked into a nightclub or bar, there was kind of this invisible contract where you were saying like, hey, I'm not going to be mean to everybody that tries to talk to me. I might be open to talking to people. That's my signature. Right, right, right. And there, there's people dancing to a Lil John Usher song, Lovers and Friends. Who knows? <laughs> that was their meeting thing. I'll say this. I just think there's a lot of guys also consuming maybe more black pill content where they're like, dude, I'm not a Chad. I'm not six foot tall. I don't mm. have these things that a lot of women are like hard, hardwired to look for. So why is me spending a bunch of money in the club for a hyper low probability even a good use of my funds yes there is a belief and there is some truth to it that the nightclub does favor pretty much like the top 10 percent of men you know like if you're tall and good looking you should go out to the nightclub because you'll get some attention just like if you're a beautiful woman absolutely go to the nightclub now let's say you consider yourself an unattractive person and you don't have much to offer in a nightclub setting then you're gonna wonder why would i spend any of my time or money or my hopes and dreams and going to the nightclub this seems stupid right 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 and there's more content coaching you against that right right number seven safety at night especially for women guys now things that happen inside the nightclub or outside the nightclub there is definitely that question so women please stay safe uber hang out with a friend unfortunately some that people is don't even feel comfortable you know ubering without a friend they might want to just stay at their friend's place that like you know your one home girl that has an apartment in the city exactly like let's say you're a woman who doesn't who doesn't have a lot of money and you feel like you're a target at night you have to consider is it worth stepping out, looking good, stepping out, and then getting a cab all the way to this club, blah, 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 and then I have to leave and come all the way back home? There's a danger right, the in all Ubers that. are $70 yeah. each way. Who knows? Exactly. Uh, number eight, David. People do feel like, and there is a wave of obviously health-conscious material and people wanting to look better and be healthier and live longer and look more ripped. People want to consume less alcohol to an right. extent. I mean, 
all you need to back this up is the whole mocktails movement, but also that every drink brand, Andrew, is not only dropping a non-alcoholic beer right now, but a hyper-low calorie non-alcoholic alternative to their regular beer flavors. Wow. So I will tell you this. It's not that I don't think no one is consuming alcohol, but a lot of people are consuming less alcohol and differently. That's what I've been told by my friends in nightlife. They are right. saving up to drink better alcohol like 1942 or even Casamigos, which is considered a little bit better. But even though that, yeah, you could argue that it's not. Right, I'm not saying it's super high level, but I'm just saying that's like the minimum that people want to drink or else people are saying, I don't want to drink at all. Dude, dude, if I'm going to order a Jack and Coke, that Coke better be Diet Coke or Coke Zero because right. I'm not taking the fructose, high fructose corn syrup. Reason number nine, nightlife culture is more frowned down upon. So meaning like the whole thing of being in a dark club and like, hey, ladies, you want to dance? And yeah, we want to party. And then like girls got to be like weary if some dude's going to put something in their drink. Like, let's be honest, that's happened. Yeah. And then there's just like a pack of dudes and they're just like walking up and they're like, yeah, where are all the beaches at? I'm trying to meet some beaches. You know what I'm saying? That kind of culture is like kind of memed about obviously there's a there's a lot of misogyny tied right. to the nightlife right, right right from the all the way from like night at the roxbury all the way to yeah. like the hangover to just a trillion jaeger bomb memes oh. and everything oh and you know what david has been a meme so many dudes have been made fun of on the internet for going to the club and then coming back lonely and just eating pizza by themselves you know how that meme is where it's just like man you went to the club you thought you were really gonna do something and now you're just no. now it's just 3 a.m at the halal you, cart are you talking about you stood in the corner and looked at girls and said oh yeah she's bad yeah, yeah, That's yeah. Hilarious. Basically, if you're a wallflower and you're broke at the club and you're not meeting a bunch of friends, it could really not be fun. Anyways, David, point number 10, and then I have a side, side little point number 11 I'm going to throw in there. But David, what's point number 10? Nobody dances with each other anymore. No! And I just think the whole like sociality norms, what's considered normal social behavior has changed. Sometimes people don't even want to be approached in the club anymore. Like They're almost offended by it. In the past, people were really looking to meet new people. David, you're saying that you can't go to the club like this anymore hey you want to dance baby when we grind it that would be so creepy now but there was a time believe me that you could ask people women if they wanted to dance and that was a an entirely appropriate it was question in, it was entirely within the realm of reason yes yes now, now those, i would say that that's outside of the realm of reason Baby, when we're grinding, I feel so excited. Anyway, so I think my number 11, David, and this is a side thing, I think the crypto boom is over. And those crypto bros, when they were making money, they were throwing money around at the club. I remember the last time the clubs looked crazy. What was that, 2021? Yeah, the bitty yeah. run up, the first all time yeah, high. Yeah, yeah, dude, in 2021, the end of 2020, holy crap. That crypto boom coming right out of COVID, it was insane. The clubs were lit, but now where are the cryptos bros money now? Or they're just not spending it as much, I guess. Right. Ultimately, Andrew, what do you think? There were so many people commenting from so many places around the world. Tokyo's trying to change some of its policies. London took the biggest hit out of everybody. New York and Vegas, it still looks busy on the outside. Miami looks busy, but if you talk to people who actually work on the back end, they think the macro numbers are down. Mm -hmm. You know, regardless of how many bodies are out, that doesn't mean like the spending is there. Mm -hmm. um, ultimately, what do you think, man? I don't think it's ever going back to how it was, but... You know, there will always be a people who feed off that energy. They are energized by everybody else being energized. So they're always going to need that human interaction because I do think to some extent, Andrew, humans are more hardwired to be social pack animals like wolves versus only at home on Apple Vision Pro. Yeah. Only the strong will survive. Mm. I guess that's my general takeaway because obviously anytime there's industry contraction, it doesn't mean that the entire industry is going away. I would compare it to something like printers. You know what I mean? At one point there was a bunch of computer desktop companies. Now there's only a few left. Yeah. So I'm saying there's industry contraction and I don't know if it's ever going back to the old days. Yeah. Yeah. I also just think a lot of people are opening bars and they're, they're moving up market. They want to open up a bar or a club for like really high-end crowds and with very expensive drinks. Now, I wish, I wish that more and more people would feel comfortable and felt like they could make money by opening up a cheaper bar. But given that there's rent and all these other costs in operating a business, if you're going to go through all that trouble to open up a bar, you might as well try to serve the nice drinks and make higher margins. Well, you're saying you, you get access to a crowd where really $100 out 
it's not even something they think about. Yeah, I wish there was the $30, $40 bars. I understand in New York, they're hard to find, probably more in Brooklyn and, you know, the little, like, dive spots. But, you know, I like, I kind of see a beauty in that. I got something to say, though. I do think that non-bar, non-club venues feel more like clubs or bars in 2024. Sometimes I go to a coffee shop, I'm like, is this a bar or a coffee shop? Mm. You can't, I'm saying it's all, the vibe and the aesthetic and the energy has been fused together between genres. All right, guys, uh, let me know what you think about these reasons. What are some other reasons you could see on why nightlife is slowly dying? Obviously, I don't think nightlife is ever going to fully go away. There's always going to be a market for human interaction, but it is definitely in a weird space right now. Things are too expensive, but they're like, people don't have enough money for things. And you know, just a lot of people spending time online. So I don't know. I think that people used to consider bar expenses on their monthly expense sheet a necessity and now it's been moved into luxury category mm. and when the economy tightens up people tend to cut luxury spending anyway guys let us know what you think in the comment section below until next time we the hot pop boys we out peace, peace.